My name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. The great thing about the 1790s round gown that I made in the last video is that it's really versatile. It can be styled for day or for evening. Now, one of these days I'll get around to styling it for day, but I always tend to like the fanciest version of everything that I make. Uh, so that means that we need to make an overrow and Spencer combination to wear, say, for like a ball or to the opera. So I found this fashion plate from 1798 and I just love this lady in purple on the right. I love the little cross that she's got going on across her chest and how she's holding the train up in front of her. I just think it's so pretty and elegant looking. I also think that I could be reasonably successful at patterning this design myself. I'm going to be using the green sari that I tried on in a previous video. So if you want to see how I would wear the sari in its original form, do go check out that video. Uh, but I'm going to be using it to make this uh, Regency era Spencer overrobe combination. So I'm going to make the train part detachable so that I can wear it as an overall, or I could take the train off and just wear it as a Spencer on its own as well. So the plan is I'm going to get my dress form and I'm gonna use tape to mark out the cross pattern. Uh, then I'm going to transfer that pattern to fabric and make a mock-up. Then I'll try the mock-up on, see if any adjustments need to be made and go from there. So let's get to it. So I've used my pattern piece from the under bodice, the lining of the white gown, because then I know, you know, the general shape and I have laid tape over top of it because what I want is for, I basically I'm gonna have one pattern piece that's a triangle here. I actually might make it like a, one piece here like and then connect these like this and then there will be another triangular piece here which will like end up matching the back and then i will still have a piece that will probably go from here up and over and i'll make that first and then lay this over top and then just have the same back as before. It'll connect and at the side here. The only thing that I'm not certain about is weight distribution. Like, is this actually going to stay sitting correctly? But what I might do is add little hooks and eyes like here like add a hook here and then add a an eye on the gown to sort of anchor it in place there. And then hopefully that will keep this chest piece in place. And then in the back, uh, since it'll be, you know, the regular back coming up like this, um, then I will have a detachable train that will go down. So that way I could wear this as just sort of a little Spencer itself or have attached the train for a more formal occasion. So I'm now creating the pattern for this sort of strap piece and I've laid the um, tape piece down over another piece of paper, trace the outline and then I'm gonna remove it so I can sort of fill in the gaps like here, here and here. So the only thing that I'm uncertain of is the shape of this piece, like because this one here really is just a triangle, like it's straight lines. This is also a straight line, but this one, however, is curved. And I'm just not sure like if that's gonna look weird or not, but I can't really make it straight because then it would like cause it to flare out over the shoulder, so. I don't know, we shall see, I guess. Definitely gonna make a mock-up for this. 
And here we have the pattern, just need to cut it out and do the test run. The mock-up turned out really good. Uh, the only thing was it was maybe a little bit too big around, but I can adjust that later at the side seams and it's always better to have more fabric to work with rather than less. So I am considering this good enough to start cutting out my sari fabric. After cutting out my fabric, the first step was to assemble the back of this bodice and I'm working on those curved seams that go up the back. Next was to sew the shoulder seams. So now I have the right side of the lining pinned to the right side of the fashion fabric and now I need to sew up some of these edges so that I can flip it out. So I think first I'm going to sew this long edge here all the way. And then probably I'll do this as well on both sides. I'm gonna leave this open and turn it in by hand and hand stitch it down after the fact. And down here, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna do this part because I haven't decided if I'm gonna add sleeves to this or not. I could possibly sew up the bottom. But again, I think I might just turn that under by hand. And then I think I will actually sew up here on the side and even if I end up making this tighter which I think I'm gonna have to at least it will have like not a raw edge sticking out on the inside might be a little bit bulky but this is so thin that I'm not that worried about it with my plan of action decided on I got to work I wanted to have as many of the raw edges as possible done up with the lining fabric because this silk was fraying like crazy and there were some very fine, delicate, narrow sections that I really didn't want to fray too much. With that done, I was able to turn the bodice and the lining right sides out. Then I realized that I forgot to pattern the little section in the front in between the crosses. So I used my old pattern from the white robe from the front piece and folded it up so that the bottom edge would be hidden underneath the bottom edge of the cross. And also I made it a little bit narrower at the top neckline as well. Then a quick try on with the different parts pinned together to make sure that it fits and looks nice before sewing it up. So let me show you what I've done here. And I didn't film during because I really wasn't sure what I was doing this whole time. Um, but essentially here is that front triangle piece and I needed to make this filler part here. So I have taken the pattern and basically just made a piece to sit behind here. If I open this up, you can kind of see a little bit better what's going on. So starting at the bottom, this is that inside piece and I lined it first and then laid it down, folded this edge under, folded this edge under, and then whip stitched both of them down. I did a similar thing up at the top where I just aligned it, folded the edge under, whip stitched that, and then uh, just tacked it down here, not worrying too much about how much of that is gonna be seen on the other side because that is going to be covered by trim on the outside. And this edge is already a clean finish uh, from when I put the lining on, so I didn't have to worry about like 
folding that under and tacking it down either. So we are then left with this on the outside. So this is the like little triangular uh, front part and it just meets here. Here's that backing piece that I just added, which was brought around here, folded and whip stitched. And then these two pieces are whip stitched together here. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna put trim here. I probably will. I think I'm gonna, cause there's gonna be trim here and there's gonna be trim here. So I think it might look good if I just put trim well, either I'll put trim here, like this, or I will just carry the trim along to the back as well. Not sure. And then there's gonna be a sleeve here, so there won't need to be any trim up at the top. But yeah, now the complication is on the other side. I can't do the same thing because I need to have a way to get in and out of this garment. So this side here needs to come and meet here and loop through. But when I do that, then there is not enough room for my head to get through it. So I need to leave this little piece free to loop through. So I think I'm going to make the same little piece from the side and I'm going to attach it, but just not stitch it down here at all and leave like the triangular piece free so that I can take the triangle piece when I put it on, loop it underneath and through. and then just have some clasp like over on the side to hook it onto. So that's the plan. It's coming together. I decided that I did want to keep the short sleeves from the initial design. So I just took the same sleeve pattern that I had created for my white gown and um, made it a little bit shorter since that pattern was for sleeves that went to the elbow. Uh, and then I used the edge of my sari fabric so that I could get that nice thick gold border on the edge of the sleeve. I hemmed the bottom of the sleeve first by turning the bottom edge up just one time because it is the edge of the fabric so I don't need to worry about it fraying. Uh, I could have just left that sleeve as is, but I really wanted that gold border to sit right on the edge of the sleeve. So I folded that up, pinned it, um, and then uh, hemmed it in place. I sewed a gathering stitch along that top armhole edge of the sleeve. And then I sewed the two under edges of the sleeve together. And I did decide to finish that off with a French seam because this, uh, this sleeve will not be lined and so I didn't want any raw edges showing that could start to fray. Then I just had to pin the sleeve in place right sides to right sides with the bodice and sew it down. For the train, I just used the entire width of the sari fabric and hemmed it at one edge. Then I pleated the other edge into a piece of white tape and stitched that down and then pinned it to the bodice where I want it to attach so that I could mark where to add in my hooks and eyes. And then I was done. It was time to try on my beautiful creation.